Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly channel. My name is John, and today I'm gonna to help you assemble your in-ground power lift basketball system. This video will follow the steps outlined in your assembly manual that comes with your basketball system. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the comments or description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Now let's take a look at what's inside the box. There are steps within this assembly that require three people, so be sure to have at least two other adults available to help. Before we begin the assembly, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need two half inch wrenches, two 7 16 wrenches, two 9 16 wrenches, two 3 4 wrenches, a Phillips head screwdriver, pliers, a rubber mallet, a drill, you may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. A block of wood, a tape measure, and a ladder. To make this easier, we're going to use a socket set, a Phillips bit, and a socket adapter. You'll also need the materials required to cement the bottom pole in the ground. Refer to your instruction manual to find those materials. It's crucial that you refer to your assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. Since this is an in-ground system, section one will go over how to cement your system into the ground. Since we're inside, we're going to use a bolt down sleeve. The pole you're going to need has a dimpled end. It's crucial that you refer to section one to see how to properly cement your pole in the ground. Start by adding your pole bracket to the top pole. Make sure the highest point of the slope is closer to the small hole at the bottom of the pole and it goes on the same side as the large holes. Now slide the top pole onto the middle pole, making sure that this hole lines up with the slot at the top of the middle pole. Secure the poles together with the hardware. Make sure the hardware is flush, it's normal if it spins freely. Make sure you've done the previous steps properly because the next step is irreversible. You're gonna seat the poles together by striking one end on a piece of scrap wood or cardboard five or six times. You're going to need to use some force, so be sure not to hit your toes. It's crucial that you seat the poles together, otherwise they can separate during use and cause serious injury or property damage. Now secure the poles together with the hardware. The screw is designed to go through the metal in the underlying pole. Now attach the backboard brackets to the backboard with the hardware. Now place the carriage bolt into these square holes on the rim pivot bracket. Using a half inch socket, press the push nut no more than a quarter of an inch onto the axle.
If you go too far, keep pushing the push nut until it's off the axle and then try again. Align the holes in the rim pivot bracket with the holes in the rim and then slide your axle through. Now add the other push nut onto the other side of the axle. Now slide the U-bolt into the U-bolt bracket, then slide it into the top holes on the back of the backboard. On the front of the backboard, add your plastic guard and your rim, making sure that all the bolts line up with the holes. Then secure your carriage bolts on the back. Now add your jam nuts onto the U-bolt, making sure to thread them all the way down. Now add the compression springs and the spring retainer plate to the U-bolt and then tighten until the rim doesn't wobble. Now add the cover plate with the hardware. Now attach the short extension arms to the brackets with the hardware. It's normal if the hardware is difficult to tighten because the nut is the center locking nut. Just make sure to tighten until the bolt is flush with the nut. Attach the long extension arms to the backboard, making sure that the two holes are at the top. With the help of another adult, attach the extension arms to the top pole, making sure that the pole bracket is facing away from the backboard. If you're doing these steps on the ground, make sure to have something under the rim so it doesn't get scratched. Now place the gas spring cover over the gas spring. Now attach the gas spring to the pole bracket making sure that the holes line up. Now place the trigger inside the handle and secure with the hardware.
Insert the release pin into the oblong hole in the gas spring. Now add your handle to the gas spring, making sure that the release pin rests in these notches. Then add your lifter arms and secure with the hardware. Now attach the handle to the pole with the hardware, making sure to add your spacers. Attach the lifter arms to the lower extension arms. Take the provided grease and apply it to the release pin. Remove the plastic film from the backboard. Add the center frame pad to the bottom of the backboard and secure with the hardware. You will be drilling through the frame, so make sure that your drill is fully charged and on the highest torque setting. Now attach the corner frame pads to the backboard. It's important to note that they will overlap the center frame pad. Make sure you've done all the previous steps correctly, otherwise you'll have to call customer service to get replacement poles. Before moving on to the next step, a helpful tip would be to compress the spring with the help of another person. With the help of two other adults, lift the assembly up onto the bottom pole. There are two holes in the bottom of the middle pole. Make sure that the hole on the side lines up with the slot on the bottom pole. Secure the two poles together through the hole on the side with the hardware. While two people hold the assembly, place a block of wood on the top pole and hit it five or six times or until the middle pole covers the slots on the bottom pole. It's crucial that you seat your poles together, otherwise they can separate during use and cause serious injury or property damage. Insert the self-tapping screw through the hole in the back of the pole. The screw is designed to go through the metal in the underlying pole. Now place your pole cap at the top of the pole. Now place your net onto the rim. With the help of another person, lift the system up until the rim measures 10 feet from the plane surface.
Once the hoop measures 10 feet, go ahead and place your sticker on the gas spring right below the cover. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime in-ground power lift basketball system. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.